right. I've been down at the boat a little while. It's about 20 to 8 now. I'm going to get the 8 o'clock lock out. So by the time I get out there, it should be flooding. It's pretty freezing. It was minus 2 while I was coming along the road. But uh, I'm hoping there's going to be these spur dogs out today. I've got the heater blaring, so uh, I doubt you'll see the dog today. I'm just going to go and make my way round to the lock now. side of the lock uh, operating today um, I don't know uh, I normally like to uh, to tie off on the other side you know it's where my helm is but it's no big drama there's uh, I think there's a massive great cat coming in behind me commercial guy so I've given him loads of room come on Pip let's get your coat on just got out to this mark now the sea conditions I don't know if you can see that it's absolutely fantastic today there's a little bit of a swell here but yeah it's lovely I'm the only one out here today seems to be so I'm going to uh, should just start to be moving now with the flood tide so it's a uh, 7.5 today so it might be ripping when it starts to go but I'll see how I am if not I've got another mark further down but on the 30th of December last year, I come out here and I had uh, I had about 12 or 14 spur dogs. That's what the target is today. So I'm going to be using, uh, I've got some fresh frozen herring. I'm going to be using them. And uh, these are the rigs I'm going to be using. So I've got a, a 6.0 cox and raw meat hook with a muppet and it's on about a, I don't know, about a four foot trace. And I'm just literally gonna um, use like a flapper herring. I've got a load of oil today, but I'm not gonna bother putting that down on the uh, anchor. It's, uh, it's freezing, I don't wanna be messing about too much, but I'm probably gonna put some oil in a bucket and dip the baits in there and then send them down. But we just see where we're starting to drift at the minute and uh, I'll get some sort of idea where I am. Now uh, today the setup I'm using, I'm using two uh, Kanzaki 12 to 20s uh, with a Pem Fab and 15 reel and I load that with a 30 pound um, 8 strand braid, uh, a Dawa braid which is great and I run a, about a 6 foot, 7 foot, uh, 30 pound fluorocarbon uh, leader on that and then I've just got on this particular one I've just got like a a running uh, ledger so weight on there I'm not sure I'm probably going to put a pound of lead down because I think it will start to rip but we'll just see how I get on and I've just got a bead and a snap swivel there quick like a quick swivel and I just connect my um, my trace directly to that and then I'll get my baits down okay so uh, I've got my chopping board out if you can see that I've got my head cam on again today so I've had these in the car overnight I took them out the freezer last night and uh, they're still frozen let's get, a, let's get a few out they're lovely sized ones these so I'm just literally I think I'm gonna just uh, I'm going to go like this on this particular one so later on I think when they defrost a bit they'll uh, I'll probably need to put some uh, elastic round and bait elastic but I think they should be all right at the minute so literally I'm just going to go under the 
chin there and through his head like that and what I'll do is I'll just uh, cut a little so it's like a flapper just gives it a little bit so that's it that's the bait there so I'll get this one down and I'll uh, put another one on this set the other rod up okay on this one I've got this uh, up on a long French boom um, but I normally use this one for wrecking but it doesn't really matter it's just a running ledger as I said the same setup on here I'm going to um, Muppet 6-0 coxswain, uh, sorry I think it's an 8 eight o coxswain roll and uh, I'm going to put this uh, flapper mackerel on this as I said I've had these in the car all night <coughs> and uh, they're still frozen now so I don't think I'll uh, need the baiting elastic I can just go literally under the head there and, uh, and straight through straight through its head and then the Muppet, as I said, I don't know, it's just an attractor really. But I've, uh, look at the weather, lovely, flat calm. I say I couldn't work today, it's, uh, it was uh, minus three where I was uh, on this building site. You can't lay bricks until it's three degrees and above, but well, happy days, so I'm out here. Um, you can see where I'm moving now, I've just moved up to this spot here. So we're just about to start to move roughly where I want to be so I think I'm going to move myself my first drift down look you can see I was moving like that now I'm moving slightly over so I reckon if I get myself here I'm just going to whack the anchor in and uh, and see what happens uh, hopefully the tide won't rip too much so I'm just going to position myself around now and get onto a drift that I want yeah I reckon here's pretty good I'm just going to chuck the uh, chuck the anchor in now as I said, there's no real secret. It's all rough ground. So let's uh, let's get the anchor down. Okay. Oh, it's frozen. see the oil and the rubby dubby I had on there last time I used it so let's just chuck her in uh, I had a knot in there last time I came so let's get this sorted out before I get in yeah I don't know how they manage to knot up but they do I have about 10 meters of chain on this boat. The sort of rule of thumb is you, uh, you have a boat length and a half of uh, chain. Oh, we're down now. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'm just gonna pay a bit of line out. That should do me. Go around there. Tie that off. That's it. And you'll see in a minute when the tide starts to move, that'll take that slack up and hopefully bring us round. You can see the water there. So we're sort of doing about 0.8 of a knot. So I'm hoping it'll just swing me into here, really. As I say, there's no real secret of this. Uh, area rough ground is rough ground so i'll just let myself hold you can sort of see the boat pulling itself round now i don't think we're going to see uh, much of pip today it's uh, 21 degrees in there 
and she's laying in there licking her feet. She's got a bed and that in there, so I don't think we'll be seeing much of her today. I've got a um, a GoPro uh, mount for her to put on, but I don't think she's going to play ball today. But uh, right, so let's see. We'll uh, the boat will start to move round. So as I said, uh, we're flooding, so we should be heading towards folk well the way i look at it is ebbing is eastbourne flooding is folkestone so we're uh, facing about the right direction we'll just wait and the boat should swing itself round and hopefully hold anchor and then i'll get my baits down Well, the rods are out. It's just a waiting game now. Well, I'm just going to bring this first rod in. The one that I had a slight inquiry on. I seem to be having technical issues again. With my GoPros. I don't know what's going on. One minute it's switching on, next minute it's switching off. But Okay, I'm going to bring this rod in and uh, I'll see if I've uh, still got my bait on. Right, what I'm going to do while I'm waiting uh, for a bite, I'm not going to reel up yet. I'm going to get my baits ready. So I'm going to take a few of them out of this bag. Take a few of them out and uh, get them soaking in that oil. You can see here where I've had some oil in there before. It's a bit frosty. I'll just chuck that oil, some of that oil in there. Oh. Don't need a lot, it's just really just to, I do, just to soak these baits up. I'll say this is concentrated, oops, concentrated uh, oil with uh, herring, mackerel, all different types. What's this got in this? Uh, yeah, perfect for making rubby dubby, injecting into dead baits, boilies, etc. I think the carp boys use this stuff as well, but it seems to work well at sea. So uh, I think anything is an attractor. So I'm going to start cutting some of these baits up. Just try and mix these around a bit in that oil. Sort of scoop it around a bit and gets all, uh, I didn't really want to get all uh, messy today, but there you go, a bit late for that. So let's see now, now I've got this uh, concentrated oil on, whether it does make a difference. I mean, obviously the sea washes it off quite quickly, so it's nice to have it in there sort of marinating. Uh, and it should you know sort of soak in I, the guy who I bought the oil from he suggested that I inject it but I've got a um, I've got a syringe but I've got loads of stuff on this boat and I just don't know where anything is um, I don't want to start raking around under the floor for it but you know we'll see like I say if them spur dogs are feeding uh, then you know, it don't really matter what you got down there, as long as you've got a, a bit of bait down there, they're going to go for it. I said last year I used frozen mackerel, I'm using herring, but I mean my thinking is that the herring are out at the minute, so this is what they're going to be feeding on, even though I think uh, a few mackerel were washed up on the beach just after Christmas Day uh, at Dungeness, which is, you know, only sort of 20 mile from where I am now. 
So uh, the temperature, uh, the sea temperature at the minute is um, is uh, 11 degrees. So I couldn't believe it. So it's a beautiful day out here today. <laughs> the lovely dogfish, but there you go. And would you believe that small little thing like that's taken an 8 0 hook and half a half a mackerel, uh, half a herring? Greedy bugger. Okay, this is the second attempt now to go and get these spur dogs. It's half seven, uh, Monday the 10th and I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna edge my bets, I'm gonna go on some ground where I had that buller, so if the spur dogs are not there, hopefully I should get a bull, uh, should get a buller, but I'm gonna go round to the lock in about 10 minutes and uh, go through and then hopefully get out on this ground. Okay, I've just got out to this uh, spot now and uh, the weather forecast is slightly different to what they said. It was supposed to be flat calm, but uh, well, it's not too bad out here today, to be honest. Uh, a little bit windy, but <clears throat> I'm just seeing where my drift line is at the minute. And we're drifting slightly different to how I'd like, but there you go. Uh, I'm gonna get myself set up, get the anchor down and, uh, and then go from there. Okay, this is the area I'm on. I want to be fishing, so I'm sort of drifting this way. So I want to really fish in this area here. It's like a <clears throat> like a deep area there. Now this is what I'm going to be using today. I've got some of this uh, herring chopped up, and uh, it's been soaking in oil. And I've got some nice frozen ones here, and I've got some mackerel. I'm hoping I can drop down with just a. I've got these. Uh, I think these are six ounces, so uh, there's not much of a tide today, so I'm going to see how I get on with this. I might just drop it down without any bait on, see how it holds. If not, I can go up to an 8 or a 12, but I think that might be all right today, and I don't know if the colour is going to uh, attract anything. So I'm using the same setup as I did before. So, uh, Dawa Kanzaki uh, with a pen fathom reel, and I've got a uh, 8 -0 cox and raw hook with a muppet and i've got about a five foot trace there with a running uh running boom uh, and 100 pound mono so um i'm gonna just drop my line over i think i'm drifting pretty spot on so i know roughly where i'm gonna uh, need to chuck my anchor in i'm gonna try and get myself in this area here so if i get myself set up before um i just need to get back to that mark but um yeah, I'll get my, all my baits set up and um, what I might do is I might, I'm going to chuck some rubby dubby down today, but what I might do is um, is try one lot with the oil and one lot with just uh, plain herring and see how I uh, get on with that. Okay, so I've chopped all my uh, ground bait up and I've got this uh, this uh, musher and basically this is what I'm doing. Smashing it all up, getting all the guts out. That's going in all, all with that oil. 
so it'll make a complete stink. As so you see, I'm smashing it all up. And then I'm going to put it in an onion sack and tie it round my anchor. So I think that would be all right like that. All right, let's get it in. There's my anchor. So let's try and do this the best way I can. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go through it, through the knot and the bag. I literally hook that on my chain and I'm going to put another one round it just to be safe Let's, so I'll go another one through that knot as well Tree. chuck it over Okay, so I've got a bit of Port and Starver side going on here. I've got a nice orange one there and a green one there. As I say, exactly the same setup. It's a uh, eight old cox and roll hook, 100 pound leader and a muppet. As I say, I've just put all this ground bait down. The anchor looks pretty good where I am. I'm happy, I'm in the ground where I wanna be. I sort of dropped the anchor here. So hopefully all that smell of guts and oil will all be traveling down to where my baits are. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna try a herring on one and a mackerel flap up on the other. So that's a nice size little joey. So all I'm gonna do is cut into the tail here. Go up here and go up cut that tail out throw that over that's a nice bit of ground bait and literally i go through the uh underside of the head here try and get it in the middle and up through the head and that's it that's all i'm going to use on that one and i think on the other one i'm going to use herring so we'll see what's the best i mean in theory the herring are uh are around at the minute so you know you think that herring would be the best bait uh, but we'll edge our bets and just try one or the other as I say I'm in some different ground today because I tried my spot where I've always caught them and uh, I haven't managed to uh, to get them in the last uh, two trips so all right let's get it over so I'm not going to try the oil yet I'm just going to try fresh herring and you can see there's not a lot of tide because the bait's not going down not going out very far but let's lower this one down slowly as I say so it doesn't tangle we're holding anchor lovely let's get this one down and then I'll uh, I'll get the second rod out about a little bit for like uh, not the ratchet to set on this one so uh, it is something big you know hopefully it will, uh, it will scream off but, um, probably the uh, famous dogfish again that's all I seem to be getting but uh, as I say really this is my last crack at this uh, this fishing um, the pollock uh, season really starts now so I've got probably sort of five six weeks of of that they uh they're in row now so they'll be big i had one a few years ago um 18 pound 11 absolute beauty so i'm not sure it's uh so hopefully the uh the bait won't get pulled off this time because uh, i've uh, whipped it with the um baiting elastic yeah you can see it's uh I hate to say it probably is a dog dogfish bite, but 
I'm after dogs, but not that type. So I've just put a pie on in there, so I'm hoping uh, that's a sort of a fail-safe way of uh, of catching. Start to do something, have a cup of tea, have a fag, or uh, start eating, and then you'll get a bite. But uh, I can't do that all day. I say it's just probably a small dogfish. So I've got a, uh, a nice size um, mackerel on there with really I'll say this uh, weather was, uh, it did change overnight. It was supposed to be um, two or three mile an hour, flat calm, and it's not quite the case today, but there you go. Still better than working. And that ratchet off. The trouble you can have your rod down there for uh, god knows how long and your bait's been stripped but uh it's pretty tough this mackerel i got on this uh, particular rod so i'm hoping it'll still be on there if it is i'll just drop it straight back down yeah look the bait's still on there oh look <laughs> blimey i've got a little dogfish i'll take that oh look it's just come off oh well you wouldn't believe that, 8 o hook and a, and a flapper of mackerel, it must have just had the uh, the tail of the uh, flapper, but I'll rebait up. Yeah look, so it's a greedy little bugger. Alright, so what I'm going to do with this one, I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to whip this one on, just so it uh, stays in, let's see how hard it is. So what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to go in through the mouth and out through its back so it's like that uh, I think that feels pretty pretty solid so I'm probably just going to leave that like that I might just split that up there just to release a little bit more scent so I'll drop this one over as I had a bit of a what I've done is I had a bit of a drama right here had a little dogfish on one rod and it's caught around the other so what I've done is I've flicked this one out and cast it out a little bit so that it gets away from the other line hopefully that'll uh, sort it out if not I might move this rod here up this side a bit further I think actually I'll do that uh, well I don't think it's meant to be today so all the lines are going all over the show I've had uh, carnage with the two rods, so it's about 20 to 12 now. It's uh, slack water. I'm doing nothing, so I'm going to have a little flick about with this uh, new rod again. I'm going to, I know my mates are on the wrecks and they're not doing that well, so I fancy a reef, so I'm going to go and have a flick about on a reef, and uh, if not, then uh, I'll go in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna save the day. Oh, it's lovely on this rod. A little bit. Let's screen them. Oh, nice. I was beginning to think I wasn't gonna get anything, but never mind. This rod is just. First time I've had something decent on it, it's just a little bit too light, I think, the, uh, the reel on it, but I don't know, it looks like a bullet, but I hope I don't lose it. This is on one of these fishy, uh, you know, it's not in, it's diving. It's a nice size pollock. Oh, look at the size of that. Oh dear. I've got a caught. Ah, did you see that? My God. <laughs> the one that got away.
Well, that was a lovely sized pollock, but I didn't get it in. So I switched round rods now, I've gone back to the 10 roof. That's a bit more uh, substantial for this sort of fishing. There you go, Let's see if I can get another one. Yeah, I'm in. Oh, so I've got a better rod on for now. So I don't want to lose this one. <laughs> so it feels like another pollock. Oh yes, yeah, diving. I try and get myself organised. I don't want to lose this one. I say these pollock this time of year are nice and fat because they're full of row and they're uh, big. This feels quite nice. I don't know if it's as good as the one I lost, but there you go. I'm going to take it. Hopefully, I don't want to lose it. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah, it's good fun. I say you can catch them on sidewinders with a boat rod, but it's nothing like catching them on these lure rods. It's just a different level of fishing. Come on. There it is, look at it, that's beauty. Look at the size of that. This is what I lost it last time. All right, you ain't gonna lose you this time. Look at the size of that one. Now that is a proper pollock. Look at the size of that. That's an absolute monster. Well, at the end of the day, I had a cracking. Didn't get any spur dog, they just haven't shown up at the minute. Um, but I had a couple of cracking pollock. Uh, one that I actually got aboard uh, was close to 16 pound. Um, and the one I lost, I think was even bigger. I got it right to the net, but there you go. It is only fishing, but uh, yeah, great day. Um, had a really good time out there, but the weather wasn't uh, as good as it should have been. But um, yeah, fantastic. I'm really made up with it. Back safe in Sovereign Harbour.